the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. I, good morning. I hope everybody having a blessed day. Hallelujah. And and I want to be able to talk a little bit about uh, my the series I've been doing concerning love your neighbors that sound. And I want you to to really think about the fact is that uh, that the only answer, as far as I'm concerned, I, you know I understand the people who do not receive Jesus Christ the person Lord and Savior at this moment at this time that they believe there's a other there's another way uh, but I, I'm just telling you from a uh, Christian perspective there's only one way there's only one way and it's not just one way to to eternal life but I do want to say right here what the scripture said in John 14 6 Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And the critical thing he's saying here is that we have to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. If we if we don't come through, we don't if we want to have an avenue toward the Father, uh, it is through Jesus Christ. And and when I talk about the Father, I'm talking about the creator of heaven and earth. And the fact is that he sent his son to, to close that gap, bridge that gap uh, that was separated at the beginning of, of Adam and Eve uh, to now. Man has been separated from, from uh, God until Jesus Christ came. And one of the things is that it's not, uh, it's not, it's not a, a, a faith based on the color of your skin it's not it's not based on any of that it's based on the fact there's love <laughs> our creator god almighty created us right out of love he sent his son that's in john 3 16 where it says god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and he said that in a whosoever and when you look at that, and these, this this word been written over two thousand years ago. It wasn't written in Europe. It wasn't. It's was written in in Israel. It was written by the uh, the, the the Jewish uh, Christians uh, concerning the, the the walk of Jesus Christ. And and the one thing about the uh, the Bible that I think uh, most of you can agree with is the fact is that it's a recorded documentation of the relationship between God and man and man and man and, and, and I think that's the that's the probably the critical piece to look at the fact is that when I when you look at the history of mankind it is full of wars it's full of uh conflicts and but it's also full of peace too you know it's, it's full of the fact is that Man also wants to live together. Man always wants to, to, to come because really we don't like living by ourselves, right? So man even himself had tried to come up with rules and laws so that we could live together, work together in order to survive together. We, that's, that's who we are, you know? We, 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 we are people that, that, that even the scripture in the beginning said, it's not good for man to be alone. Uh, so we were created as a people who congregate together and, and survive together and thrive together. And for our country, as far as the United States, United States, we are the United States of uh, United States of America coming together, one nation under God, indivisible, huh? With liberty and justice for all. Now I know that some people will believe, and and, and, and we know about our history. Our, we got the we had an ugly history where some people say liberty and justice for a group of people, but that doesn't matter. The truth, the word itself, is a talking about liberty and justice for all one nation under God, indivisible, and that's what we strive for. 
it is the it is the, the doctrine this constitution of, of the desire for man to 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 with the inalienable rights to pursue prosperity and happiness huh? that that that's that's what we come into the body of Christ you know this 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 nation was found under the the, the, the right of freedom of religion and yes people no matter what happens in life they're going to be corrupt people people looking for power always trying to abuse that always trying to find a way to 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 manipulate it and and and, and, and for their own personal benefit that's the nature of mankind and i know some people say well should i generalize well i'll just let the history speak for itself but i do know when a general generalize too is that most mankind, most of us want to live together in peace, want to live in harmony. So when, you know, when the scripture, uh, when we talk about even in the scriptures about the fact is, you know, when I, I told you the, uh, in Mark and Matthew, excuse me, uh, the fact is that Jesus, when he came, he basically <clears throat> wanted us to have the, uh, the, understanding that we're supposed to love one another. And you know, I put it here and I'm, let me see if I can bring it up on the screen. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up on the screen here. It says the fact is that when, when, when Jesus said that we supposed to love one another, you know, he said, you know, uh, he said that this is the way people would know who we are. Is by the love that we have for one another. And, and we got to always remember that we need to always strive to live together. <laughs> and the only way we can live together is through love. You know, and, and, and I, said, I think I said it before, a lot of cases, people don't know how, don't, doesn't understand what that means as far as what love is because we push it up so bad that we have a tendency to, to jack it up. But the reality of it is that God wants us to love one another. Uh, you know, I use that when we did the uh, the Samaritan story, and 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 I and I bring this up here for you of the Samaritan. Uh, that that piece where it says uh, about loving your neighbor as yourself. You know. I think it starts right here, let me see here, verse 27, uh, where it read is that uh, the lawyer actually quoted this in the Old Testament. It says, and he answered, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. You know, and Jesus said, thou hast answered right, do. Just do, and thou shall live. You know, and and then that's when he went into the story of the Samaritan. And the fact is that the uh, priest passed by, that supposed to be working in the temple. We talked about the fact is that the uh, Levite also worked in the temple, and he went by the man that was found stripped and, and beaten and, 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 and needed help. And then the Samaritan came, and I I said it before, and I said again, the Samaritan was somebody who followed the Jews were concerned and somebody that they didn't want to deal with. So we, there was already some type, would you you may call it either part of the, uh, I mean, back in those days, biblical day of racism, or some some form of discord between a one group of people to another group of people and how they looked at that person. But what was significant was the fact is that the Samaritan, despite how they were viewed by the Jews, and despite the fact is that the, the Jews were people that were, uh, especially the priests and the Levite, people who worked in the, the temple, the only one that showed mercy was the one that was viewed as something that people, at least the Jewish people, didn't want to deal with. And that, and I said it before, and, and, and this is really session four, I said it before is that at that time, uh, the Samaritan didn't know that man. The scriptures show he didn't know that man, but he still had mercy on that man. 
he he rented aid to that man, dressed his bulls, sent him, put him in the uh, on the donkey, put him in the inn, paid for the, the care for that young man, or I don't know how old he was, but the care for the man, and and he promised that if if the money that he left was not enough when he came back, he'll pay even more. But the, the what I thought was significant in the fact is that he was describing what love is because that's what the lawyer asked what who is my neighbor because you was to love your neighbors yourself jesus said the person that the samaritan showed mercy to was his neighbor so love is is really an act of kindness and i said it before and i said it again we matter of fact when we come together uh as 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 people as one nation under god uh when we work together uh is is in the form of act which i consider an act of kindness is 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 not to say that that the type of love that we sometimes keep thinking about is what we have this this emotional uh thing or passionate feeling that they relate to as like husband or wife uh or a, a blood relative uh, which we know has been jacked up. We know that even husband and wives have been jacked up. We know that relationship with boyfriend and girlfriend has been jacked up. So we know that when we look at the, the types of relationships out there, they have been jacked up. We know that relationship between man and God, man has jacked that up too. But the fact is that the true understanding of relationship is, is coming together, trusting one another, believing in one another, and helping one another out working together. Loving your neighbor as yourself is not about trying to be all deep and, 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 and uh, uh, with, 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 with understanding that love is more of a compassion. Love is more of a relationship and action of, of working together in kindness and being gentle to one another. And that's what we're trying to do as, as we walk this Christian walk. Loving your neighbor is working together with your neighbor. When you at your job, if you sit there and be cooperative and then work together for the common call, for the mission of that job, that is called love for one another. When we as a family come together and the mother and the father do the providing and protecting their children, raising their children, and sometimes that even great when raising children is called disciplining the children, it's still showing love. When we go and, and, and support somebody, whether they whether a child support the child in, in, a, in a sports game or, or some type of musical uh, event or some whatever thing the child may be doing, being there supporting that person, that's your love, right? Well, that's the same thing we'll be talking about with each other in this country, in this nation, in this world. You know, even when we're driving, if you sit there and you don't run the traffic light, that's showing an act of kindness. So I'm, I just want to make sure you understand love is not something that's not tangible. Love is an action and an action of kindness toward one another. See, that's why it's interesting when, and, uh, when you look at the scriptures and they talk about the fact is that when you put the two great commandments together, where to love the Lord that God, all that heart, all that soul, all that mind, all that strength. And then you put together the fact that to love that neighbor's that self, right? And it said that all the laws and the prophets hang on this, love. Love is an action. It is something that you can grasp and work with. And God is just saying is, as a Christian, don't be too deep. Just recognize who you are. Just recognize what God wants you to do. And you know what? Most people have a tendency to, to move back away from this. They want to make it more complex and more, more difficult. But reality is not. Reality is that it's just us working together, living and trusting one another, not stealing from one another, not taking somebody's wife, not taking somebody's husband, not... Uh, uh, killing somebody is it's about working together and, and and for a common good and is that working together mean to to have uh some type of means of protection you know like that's love to protect your family matter of fact that's love when you sit there and see a neighbor in distress by somebody who's trying to hurt them and you sit there and defend them that is love love is not some kind of 
passive thing. Love is a, a sacrifice, an act of kindness towards somebody else. That's what it's all about. So for the this one, and I'm going to just break, as you know, I'm going live now, but I'm, I'm going to break these up in segments. So for this one, I say, don't forget, love one another. Trust in God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind. Lean out to your own understanding. Amen. Trust in him. Amen. All right. So